Hello and welcome to the week ahead video with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Thursday the 13th of September and the time has just gone 18.20 British summer time and we're looking ahead to next week which begins Monday the 17th of September. Uh, but, but before we get to uh, looking at what's, gonna, what's going to happen next week, let's just have a quick round up uh, of what's happened this week and also today. Uh, today, Thursday the 13th of September, has been a fairly busy day on the markets, to say the least. Uh, we've had a number of up updates from a number of central banks. Uh, the Czech Central Bank raised the interest rates to 24% uh, from 17.75%. Uh, uh, Reuters had a consensus estimate of 22%. Uh, the rate hike did come to, to some as a bit of a, bit of a surprise, uh, given that President Erdogan stated a few hours beforehand he's actually in favour of interest rate cuts. Um, today also we, had, we heard from the Bank of England, uh, there was no change to the monetary policy whatsoever and no real surprise there. Um, the Bank of England did though raise their actual, their third quarter outlook uh, growth to 0.5% zero, zero from 0.4% and said that consumption is, uh, is on the rise. Uh, the ECB had an update today also, um, no change to the actual, the actual interest rates and, and no surprise there but they did state sort of as expected, that they're going to be winding down the quantitative easing program. Uh, come October, they're going to be trimming the bond buying scheme down to 15 billion, 15 billion euros worth of government bonds per month until the end of 2018. Um, within, the bank, within the European Central Bank update, uh, they also managed to actually lower growth forecasts for the next number of years, and they warned about the potential risks from emerging market economies and also the rise of protectionist policies. Uh, earlier today, we also had inflation from the U.S., the inflation rate, inflation rate uh, dropped from 2.9% back to 2.7%. Economists were expecting a decline down to 2.8%. This softened up the, uh, the US dollar and propped up other currencies such as the euro and the pound. And it also managed to actually push uh, equity markets higher as well because it, it, there's a slight fee, some of the fear around a tighter monetary policy from the Federal Reserve has been removed somewhat. It's also worth pointing out that US, equ US equities have been, are, have been I've been in good shape the last couple of days, uh, given given the, uh, the fact that um, the United States has reached out to China in terms of actually trying to get the trade trade negotiations rebooted. Uh, the oil price had a fairly sizable sell-off today for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, the hurric Hurricane Florence, which is en route to the United States as um, as we speak, uh, has been downgraded from a Category 4 storm to a Category 2 storm. So some of the fear factor around that has, has declined. Also, the International Energy Agency stated that OPEC output uh, in August actually increased by 2.8%. So there's a so that added to the um, the increase in an output uh, added to the selling pressure. Taking a look uh, to next week, starting off on Monday the 17th uh, of September, FedEx have first quarter figures. Um, and even though some, even though the the work the kind of rise of e-commerce and online shopping has, has put a major dent in on, in traditional retailers and also the kind of traditional high street, it's actually been great business um, for FedEx, the, the delivery company. Uh, the most recent set of full year figures. Uh, we've seen an increase in both profits and, and revenues, and, and it, which came in ex above expectations, and they've also managed to raise their guidance. On Wednesday, uh, we hear from the uh, from the Bank of Japan. Uh, no, expected there, no, expect, no change expected in relation to their policy, even though we had a few tweaks uh, of the from the Bank of Japan's monetary policy. We're expecting no change to the actual policy coming up. Um, growth is at the best levels uh, since 2015, but still we're not expecting any change from the B from the BOJ policy. Uh, on Wednesday, we have first half figures from Kingfisher. Um, if the first quarter was was quite weak, the second quarter was was uh, was quite respectable, partially because of the, the warm weather, but also looked quite good in comparison to the relatively weak first quarter. Uh, Kingfisher have uh, uh, the same issue with the kind of French division for a number of years now. Uh, we could hear whether this is going to be any changes in relation to restructuring, uh, perhaps or maybe not at, at the division. I will also look forward to actually their, uh, their their full year guidance. On Thursday, it is the Swiss National Bank, the S&P, SNB, um, where even though first quarter growth was uh, was 1% was, uh, and zero and, and uh, second quarter growth was 7, ten, seven tenths of 1%, we're still expecting no change from the negative interest rates that the SNB holds. On Thursday, Darden Restaurant Group uh, over in the United States will have uh, first quarter figures out, uh, bearing in mind the last time we had a quarterly update from uh, from the organization, uh, Q1, Q1 revenue. Q1 earnings were up 18%. All the various different um, restaurant chains that they own have actually are, are, are producing increase in sales. Uh, U.S. consumer sentiment is on the rise and appears to be here to stay. 
on Friday, we have both Canadian CPI and Canadian both Canadian CPI and also Canadian retail sales. Uh, broadly speaking, the CPI has been fairly positive recently, where the, where the retail sales has been a little on the mixed side. Uh, there is speculation that the Bank of Canada are going to raise rates next month, and it's not unusual for the Bank of, Bank of Canada to actually kind of keep a certain uh, keep a certain distance behind the Federal Reserve. And there is talk the Federal Reserve are going to raise rates this month here in September. And Friday, uh, finally, we have full year figures from Smith's Group. Now, one of the kind of issues that, that Smith's Group are, are gonna, could potentially face is that some their medical device uh, division, uh, some of the, in, in relation to EU rules which are changing around 2020, some of their products may not be compliant. So that, that's going to be an issue, potentially an issue um, for Smith's Group, so keep an eye out for that. And also, we could hear an update on the kind of, on again, again, talks of the merger uh, with the U US company I uh, ICU Medical. I'll take a look now at a couple of the markets uh, that we discussed. I'll take a look now at the S&P 500 to start off with. S&P 500 has kind of resumed uh, its, its, its upward trend. We're not too far away from, from the all-time high. As you can see, the big picture has been a classic example of, uh, of, of higher highs and, uh, and, and higher lows. If we continue to push on from here, we could be looking at retargeting re 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 uh, 2,916. And if we go beyond that, uh, we, we could be looking heading up towards uh, 2,920. Moves to the downside in the S&P 500. May find some support in around this area here, uh, which will come into play uh, in around um, 2,864. And a move south of there uh, could find support from the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, which comes into play at 2,844. Take a look as well at the um, at the dollar yen. We mentioned the uh, Bank of uh, we have an update for the Bank of Japan next week. So broadly speaking, the dollar yen um, has been on the rise basically since April. Even though we have seen a bit of a sell off in, in recent months, essentially the, the kind of the wider upper trend is still very much in play. And why would we hold above this red line here, the the Trinity moving average, which comes into play at one spot twenty eight sixty two. Oh, apologies. This is the, the apologies. This is the U.S. dollar, uh, Canadian dollar um, chart, which I was going to talk about anyways, uh, given that we have Canadian CPI and retail sales figures out. So taking a look, starting off with the, with the just to reiterate, this is the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar chart. Uh, so the dollar CAD has been, has been broadly moving higher, uh, essentially from most of 2018, essentially since February, it's been in a fairly solid upper trend. And while we remain north of this red line here. Uh, the 200 day moving average, which comes to play at one spot 2862, is likely that the outlook is going to remain positive. If we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the, this, this region here, um, the kind of highs of mid July in around 132 spot 89. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading it back up towards the June highs, which come into play in around one spot 3385. Any moves to the downside may find some support from this red line here of the 200 day moving average. Which, as I said, comes into play at one spot 2862. And a move south of that uh, could pave the way for further losses. And I could target this region here in around, in around the one spot 2750 area. Now we're coming on to the US dollar, US dollar Japanese yen. Once again, apologies for that. Uh, so we're now looking at the dollar yen chart. And the dollar yen chart has been broadly moving positive since March. It's been in a, in a fairly decent uh, upward trend. Uh, in recent months. There was a bit of a pullback between July and August, but to be fair, it did manage to make a lot of ground between March and July in the first place. But notice how it actually got fairly decent support of, of the 200 moving average, this red line here, and the market has been pushing higher yet again. And the highs of today, as well as take out the highs of August, so we're, we're now back at levels not seen um, since, well, actually, since actually early August. So the highs, the highs of today have taken out the highs of late August, are now back to levels not seen since early August. If we do continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here at one, one spot 12, 15. And if we go north of that, we could be looking heading up, up, up towards the, uh, the July high of one spot 13, 18. Any moves to the downside may find some support from this, first of all, from this 100 day moving average, this, this yellow line here, which comes into play at one spot, 110 spot 62. And we move south of that because it finds some support of the 200 day moving average, this red line here. We should come into play at 109 spot 77. Take a look now at Darton Restaurants, that restaurant company uh, in the US, which have, full year, which have numbers coming out uh, next week. It's been in a classic uh, example of an upper trend for a, a number of years now. 
And if you can see here that it's actually been a particularly, particularly impressive upward trend since May of this year. The, the gap higher here, so the gap of the upside, upside so points to uh, upward momentum. Uh, as you can see, we, we continue to push on higher here. The only, it was actually only, uh, it, it was only um, a few days ago we actually managed to actually hit an all-time high. So that really sums up how positive the sentiment is. Uh, surrounding uh, this particular stock. If we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting 120. And if we go beyond that, we, we will be obviously in fresh record high territories. Most of the downside may find some support from this blue line here, that the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 112 spot 27. Notice how the, the, the 50 day moving average, they ma managed to act as both resistance and support back in June and if the metric has acted as, as both support and our resistance uh, not too long ago it's a possibility it may, may do so again in the future. I'll take a look a quick look now at the pound versus the the US dollar. It's had a fairly decent session the last few days before we wrap things up. So the pound has been losing ground versus the US dollar since April uh, but, it's, but in the last few sessions we have seen a very decent move to the upside. And if you take a look at the price action, we've seen the market rally uh, in the last few days. We've hit a level not seen since um, since early August. Taking a look at the MACD indicator, the MACD, the MACD histogram, we can see there's a fairly steady increase in positive momentum. So this move to the upside is being, is being confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. So we can be more confident that this upward move is going to last. And while we, we remain above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into, into play just south of uh, the 130 region, we could see further gains made on the pound versus the US dollar. And if you take it into push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 132 spot, one spot 32.50 area. And we've seen quite a bit of consolidation in recent months on that area. If you fall, if you do manage to kind of turn over on itself and fall back below, fall back below the kind of 130 area, we could be looking heading back down towards the early September low of one spot 20, one spot 27.85. And if you go south of that, we could be looking at targeting the August low of one spot 26, six, one spot 26.61. Um, well, if you have any kind of comments on this video or any of the other, other videos we've made here uh, at CMC Markets, feel free to leave a review uh, on Google Reviews. Um, that's all from me this week. Thank you very much.